Okay, so here we are at deep stream below 60 foot weir. The first thing I'm going to do, of course, is string out our tagline. So we want two secure anchors each side, run our line across, aiming for about 300, 500 above the water, that's quite good for the traveller. And then just checking the section on the way back, are there any boulders we could throw out, any cobbles, anything that might obstruct it, weed, sticks. And we're just now setting up Stream Pro on the side. So our Stream Pro today is a compass enabled later model and we're going to run it with the transducer out the front so we can get it at a lower or shallower depth and measure more of the actual cross section. Okay before we start our measurement we're just going to check our communication between our laptop and the Stream Pro. So if we go into our device manager and open up our ports. We can see here that down the bottom there is a USB serial port COM26 which is what our Pirani Bluetooth device is plugged into connecting to our Stream Pro. So that's COM26. So now when we start up Wind River, before we do a new measurement let's go into the peripherals and just check for the ADCP device what configuration that is. You see it's configured wrong COM port, we're going to go to COM26. OK that, test the port. This should come back with a serial number and a few lines from the Stream Pro, yep, like it has. So we now we've established the communication. So we can close that and now start up a new measurement. So we want to put in our river number, site number, station name. A lot of this can be filled in later if you don't have time. Things like dates check, often it's 12 hours behind. And maybe who's doing the measurement, how you're doing the measurement. This tethered boat and maybe location is important. Uh, are you always in the same location or are you in a new cross section? In this case we're downstream of the weir. And the temperature which we measured earlier at 6.9. And here you'll see it interrogating the ADCP. This light will turn green when it connects and it'll put the serial number into here. There we go. In this case we're not using GPS, depth sounder. So if we just go down the line, we're going to put in the transducer depth now of 2 centimetres, 0 0.02. No magnetic variation. Our depth we've established is 0.5. Uh, the velocity is about the same, 0.5, and the boat speed is going to be that or less. Uh, the substrate's gravel. And we're going to leave all our other uh, options on automatic. Uh, we want to make it a unique naming, so in this case let's put the date, the month and the year. And there we have. So the first thing we want to do is maybe do the ADCP test. This will just check that everything is running OK on the Stream Pro. This will come up with a series of pass and fail. So you can see here we have everything's passed with no failures. And that files it under the QAQC folder in the measurement file. So now we can start pinging. Just check everything's going, date and time. This is, is your PC time correct before we set the time? Stream Pro is now being reprogrammed. So you might want to just alter some of the layout, such as moving this recording box, because it tends to hide the duration. Depends on how you've got your screen set up, saved. These can be moved around to suit. And the other thing that often you have to change is the actual intensity profile here. Um, should we right click on it, properties. 
And let's set the scale, the Y scale, to something a bit more realistic rather than a metre, which it seems to be a default to 0 0.6 in this case. And there you have it, ready to go. OK, we're going to calibrate the compass. It helps to get on a flat surface. And hit start calibration. Now you'll see it's split up into quadrants. And when we get the green, we'll just keep moving it slightly. Keep it there until it gets its reading and carry on around 360 degrees. Compass is in this part of the stream probe, not in the head. And the last section has come up with OK. Collect verification samples. We're going to go OK. And do one more circuit. It obviously helps when you can see the screen as you're doing this. See we had one section there where I was a bit too fast and you'll get the lesser colour. And the last section. Now we can go back and redo those other sections. Oh, it's come up complete. So it's happy with it, it's calculated at 1.5% error. A degree, so we're after two or less, so that's okay in this case. And we just stop, finish calibration, close. So this is the standard Niwa Traveller. It's variable speed. This allows us to control the, um, the speed at which we're towing the stream probe backwards and forwards at a very consistent rate and at a speed that will be consistent at 3 minutes per cross section or thereabouts. So you can see we've now connected the stream probe to the traveller. The traveller connected the right way around, facing downstream. And we've set our transducer head out the front to 2 centimetres. So we're measuring more of the actual profile. You may have to go to the internal setting, where you can see if we use the internal, we would have been down at you know, 5 or 6 centimetres under. If you're in conditions where maybe there's a strong backwind, you can put on a drogue. In our case, it's just a small line with a half a Coke bottle. So the water's flowing through, it's just holding it straight. Even if you've got a uh, maybe a lot of turbulence in the stream and the stream probe's moving around a lot, this will just help stabilise it and keep it on track. Trying for a test run. We can uh, start our traveller moving. This, at this point we want to roughly guess for a three minute cross section how fast we need to set it. Now, as it's set at the moment it's possibly a little bit slow. So we're going to turn that up. Let's give this a slight increase in speed. Well, it looks good. So we're just going to run the stream pro out until we find a section where we think the fastest flowing so we can do a moving bed test, which in this case is about here. So I'm going to stop, stop it at this point, and we'll just hold it there while we set up and do a test on the moving bed. So moving bed test, holding it stationary on the line for Five minutes, ten minutes, whatever you, if it's moving bed, the longer, 
better leave it the better the uh, record or the correction that you'll be able to make. When you know there's not, and you can see there's obviously not, maybe three to five minutes is adequate. Minimizing any movement of the boat during the moving bed test helps. You see the drogue's helping here, but it's just stopping the back swinging around. The compass also helps. You can see in this condition here, the gravel's very stable underneath the boat. Okay, so we're just going to let this jump ahead now. So after three minutes we'll stop the moving bed test. And you can see the results of a distance upstream of 0 0.079, fairly small, no moving bed velocity duration of 200 so no correction needed there it hasn't come up with any warnings so we're all okay so as an example here we're going to create a bit of moving bed by just kicking up a bit of fine silt and gravel upstream let that float down past the probe and then we'll see the difference it makes so if we now look at our ship track we can see here that it's effectively moving upstream by 0 0.4 of a meter. So this time we've marked our tagline with a clamp. For the traveller sitting against it we're going to try a loop method across and back. Loop and hit OK and then we're going to hit start here. Now this time we've got the traveller running fast because the loop doesn't need to take as long. So I've got it up on maximum speed there and back. Now when we get near the other side, we're just going to bring it back again. To connect up our loop. So as we finish now with F6 to end the moving bed test, uh, we can see the results here of a distance made good, 0.207. Moving bed velocity 0 0.001 and no correction recommended. If we also look over at the loop here, you can actually see that 0.2 of a metre difference slightly upstream, but obviously not enough to make a difference or warrant a correction in this case. Okay, so now we're ready to start a transit, F5 or acquire start transit. And in this case, we're going to put on our offset 0.2 and we're on the right bank and hit OK. Wait for 10 ensembles. And remember we're after 12 minute, at least 12 minute exposure or duration time. Um, usually we do a 4 times a 3 minute. In this case we're going to go 2 times 6 minute cross sections. As we get close to the other bank, we just want to make sure we get the clamp holding it in the right spot before we end this cross section. So we're going to put in our offset of 0.3 meters. And then start up a new section to come back, new measurement, same offset and start it off again. So after 10 ensembles on the left bank now, we bring it back. And as we get to the right bank, we put in our offset of 0.2. Finish that measurement. So F12 to display the results, we see a 1.181 and a 1.186 cumic flow and a standard deviation of 0.32. Here's an example of a, a dirtier stream, the Heathcote. And uh, you would think here, with the colour of this water, that there'd be moving bed. 
But if we look at our results afterwards, our loop test, we've got a distance made good of 0 0.078, fairly small, moving bed velocity of 0, so actually nothing there. If we contrast this with the shot over, uh, you can see the river at this stage is quite low and clear, you wouldn't expect any, but if we look at the ground here, or the bed, you can actually see the stone and gravel moving along, and pebbles moving over the top, and our result. If we look at our moving bed test, in this case it was a stationary moving bed test, and you can see that it's moved 10.7 metres upstream at a moving bed velocity of 0 0.058 metres per second, which is significant. And at this location we would always use our GPS as a reference, rather than the bottom track. So still at the shot of a site, this time using the remote control boat Stream Pro, but no GPS. Therefore a loop correction was required. This gives us an average moving bed correction right across the section rather than a stationary test which could be biased one way or another. So as the loop ends, you can see we have moved quite a bit upstream at the ends here where they meet. And if we look at our results, you can see that there's a distance made good of 9.43 metres, a moving bed velocity of 0.048 meters per second and it's telling us to use this loop for corrections. So if we now run through each cross section we can see the uncorrected and the corrected discharges. The side, the blue being the corrected and you can see the difference, it's always higher with the corrected each time Again, there's the last one there. Now if we do our F12 table, you can see the corrected discharges there, our average, and our standard deviation of 3.37%, so pretty good.